person is a longtime activist who is now running to represent the very people who can hear us right now. Uh, the lovely people of what county? Montgomery County, Maryland. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming out here tonight. Um, as mentioned, I ha am a longtime activist and advocate. I've grown up in Montgomery County, uh, born and raised here. Um, and I can't say that I have ever been to a protest in front of a Supreme Court justice's house before. This is the time. Um, in 2018, uh, my oldest child was two years old. Uh, I was hoping for another child, and I got the exciting news that um, I was pregnant, and um, at, in, at an early appointment, I found out that that uh, pregnancy was not going to, was not going to make it. Um, so I was given the option to, uh, to use what Benny would call an abortion drug to end the carrying of those fetal cells and that's what I decided to do which allowed me then to start trying again for you know for the the family that uh, me and my partner really hoped for um, thank you And I think a lot of times, um, you know, ab abortion is talked about as a really, you know, difficult and, and taxing decision. And for many people, it is. But I also think it's important to acknowledge that for many people, it's not. <laughs> for many people, you know that that is what you need to do in that moment, whether it's for medical reasons, for personal reasons. It's really not anybody's business what the reason is besides yourself and your, potentially your doctor. So I decided to end um, what, was, what was then barely a pregnancy and, and, con and continue on you know, my family making journey. And uh, it was at that time that Kavanaugh was nominated to the Supreme Court. So I spent a great deal of time, like thousands of others, you know, I took to the streets to protest this nomination. And, and I thought that there might actually be a chance that we might have just a small handful of Republican senators who might be brave enough, who might be brave enough to put party second. That obviously, as we saw, that obviously was not the case. But I, you know, I was one of the thousands who not only did we fill the streets, but you know, hundreds of us went to those senators. We went to those senators' offices. Yes, we, we told did. very painful stories there. I know, I'm sure, who was here? Who was here or knows someone who was there? Thank you so much. We told very personal, very painful stories. Um, once again, uh, once again, we were asked to re-traumatize ourselves in order to try to seek, to beg for, to demand justice. And, you know, there were, let's see, I was one of nearly 200 people, nearly 200 people who were dragged out of Kavanaugh's nomination hearing. As we, as we begged them, as we demanded that they, that they stop this atrocious nomination, we knew what the intent was. We knew the intent was to bring us here today. We knew this. They all knew it. We all knew it. And that's why it was worth so much. We knew that this was going to be the canary in the coal mine that would lead to the downfall of so many other rights, voting rights. We've seen so many things, not just that have already happened, but are on the dockets coming up. I didn't know when I was dragged out of that hearing room uh, by Capitol Police, I didn't know that I was just a few weeks pregnant at that time with my now second child, who is two. I did not know that I was pregnant as they dragged me out, and I was coming close to the time by which the Supreme Court has agreed with Texas that people who can get pregnant should not only know that they are pregnant, but should have made the appointment for, you know, for potentially getting an abortion and then for having that carried out if they need or want to. And I didn't know that I was pregnant at that time. 
So, this brings us here to this moment today, a moment that we all forecasted, that we all knew was going to happen, and that of course was the intent, was the intent of not only this nomination, um, but the others that McConnell and the GOP pushed through. And what we have to recognize is that this moment is not only about reproductive rights. It's not only about reproductive rights because what they have shown in this moment is that they do not care about constitutionality. They do not care about precedent that has been set and confirmed. They are not here to do the job of the Supreme Court. So this is a danger to every fundamental right in this country. This is a danger to immigration rights. This is a danger to LGBTQ plus rights. This is, this is a danger to voting rights. This is, a, this is a danger to every type of civil rights that we have seen Republicans across this country trying to overturn. The buck is supposed to stop at the Supreme Court and we know that they are now a tool. They are now a tool of that process. So, what do we do? What do we do? Obviously, we would like Kavanaugh to resign. I don't think he's gonna do that. I don't think he's gonna do that, but we should absolutely amplify that demand because that is the right thing to do. Kavanaugh, you should resign right now. Right now. However, we're in a situation where the only thing, the only thing that is most likely going to change the balance of power on the court is to expand the Supreme Court, which in fact does have precedence and is not against the Constitution. And we are seeing that, we are seeing the Judiciary Act, the Judiciary Act of 2021, we are seeing that starting to trend again because it is more clear than ever right now that that's what needs to happen. It's time to balance the court. It's time to balance the court by adding justices to it. And in order to expand the court, we of course are going to need to do, need to do away with that Jim Crow era relic that is not in the Constitution. What is it? The filibuster. We need to end the filibuster, we need to expand the Supreme Court, and we need to put the rights, the civil rights, of those who are most vulnerable, those who are at most at risk, we need to put those above, those above wealthy donors. We need to put those above people who are in power just to protect their own interests and their friends' interests. This is what's at stake right now. Everything. This is the canary in the coal mine. So, we're here for reproductive freedom, but we're also here for freedom in general. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kristen. Let's hear one more time for Kristen. Absolutely many, many wonderful points made. I really appreciate Kristen's choice to share her abortion story. Abortion storytelling is an incredibly important aspect of this fight. There are no bad abortions, except for the ones that are shamed. There are no bad abortions, except for the ones that people can't get. There are no bad abortions because the right to pick and choose how you plan your family is a human right. And because it's not always that simple as planning. We've been getting a lot of Facebook comments. Wear a condom, get on the pill, be responsible. Abortion is responsible, thank you so much. Absolutely. And more than half of all people who received abortions in the United States, in the year 2014 at least, were using a contraceptive method. Many of them were using more than one. 